welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you, Phil Andrews, president of the LIAACC. He'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Phil Andrews. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, it's great to have you here. We love people in the community who are doing big things, great things, and of course, moving things along, movers and shakers. So we're very, very blessed to have you here tonight. Thank um, you. Before we even go into the LIAACC, let's talk about you. Who is Phil Andrews? Well, Phil Andrews is a former um, franchise owner. Um, I had 10 stores in um, my 20s. I had a haircut hut, barbershop franchise, a beauty salon. And um, I've been a leader since around 1989 in the community. At 25 years old, I was a member of the 100 Black Men uh, Board of Directors for many years. And I went on to become president of one of the most prominent organizations in the country, an uh, organization comprised of 10,000 men, 110 chapters around the world. So how did you, what would you say attributed to your success to be in your 20s owning a multitude of businesses and making it to the top hundred um, by the age of twenty-five. I mean, that some people are now coming out of college. You have debt. How did you do it? Well, one of the things um, as a child, I, I, I was raised by an extraordinary woman, and she was a leader and a pastor of a church. So leadership was not a strange concept. You know, many of us are leaders of children. Mm -hmm. As children, we're different. Uh, we involved. We was engaged in the community. We was a role model. So leadership was a natural progression as I went on because I already was raised by an extraordinary person. Absolutely. Um, and how has that shaped you? Because you love business and just hearing you talk and, and you could tell, you know, for you to have those type of businesses, you have to have that business mindset. Well, one of the things, uh, one of my earliest lessons in business that actually came from the church is uh, stay involved and get involved in your community. Because mm -hmm. um, my concept is it's not enough to work on your job. You must go work with you, where you live at. And um, I also uh, read a quote many years ago in my 20s. Percy Jackson said, all of my life I've had access to people of, of ability, mm -hmm. but did not have access to capital. I believe anything in life is possible if one has access to people of ability and capital. So when we put the two together, oh, yeah. it's a marriage, and it makes things happen that we think, thought was not possible. And and that's absolutely true because a lot of times, you know, you could position yourself. And I said I've been blessed to have so many opportunities. I've been aligned with some great people, but maybe if I had more backing, or maybe if I had just the capital. It does take both. I mean, not saying that being aligned with the right people, because internships and so many things are valuable, just getting to shadow people doing the real work or modeling yourself after somebody who's doing something you aspire to do is fantastic. And actually, the root, root word of, uh, of the root of capital is kaput. It means it happened in the brain. So that's where real capital starts. Money starts in a, is an idea. Ideas sure. are only not a source of pleasure by ideas of sources of rich richness and power. Absolutely. So tell me about the LIAACC. Well, the Long Island African American Chamber of Commerce, uh, you know what happened? I was term limited like Obama. <laughs> so I was when I was term limited and my term was over, they called and they said, would you like to be uh, president of the Long Island African American Chamber of Commerce? And um, as a former business person, you know, you drive, you a business owner got to drive business. Mm -hmm. And I look at the chamber the same way, you know, I, I follow up on revenue, I follow up on contacts. So it was a natural thing for me to be a chamber leader because I understood the mind of a business owner. Mm -hmm. So some chamber presidents are not business owners or never been. Very true. So they would not know how to drive. I, I, in, f in a short couple of years, I took this chamber to be in the champion in 14 counties in downstate New York by the federal government. Wow. I mean, that's phenomenal. That's a lot of big changes. What would you say has been and still is the main mission? Well, I feel the chamber is not successful if the businesses are not succeeding. 
you know, um, if if uh, we supposed to be a chamber of commerce and we supposed to help them grow their businesses and nobody's succeeding or moving to another level or creating opportunities, then we're not doing our, doing our job as a chamber. And what resources? So if you're a black owned business on Long Island, you could qualify to be a part of Long Island. Well, that's a it's a unique um, paradox. When we designed the Long Island African American Chamber of Commerce, um, we took the original uh, geographical uh, territory of Long Island, which means Long Island and Queens. So we we mm -hmm. we we uh we own Queens. We we said that just, we brought them all bundle together. It in. Yeah, we bundled <laughs> because it was Long Island. The original map says Long Island, Quicklin, Breen. They cut off certain parts to make Long Island and Queens. And we thought that it's better to have one strong chamber than a weak chamber of commerce mm -hmm. by being regional. Absolutely. But where would you say which parts of Queens and Long Island, which areas are the bulk of the businesses located? Well, we're looking at the population of um, Jamaica, Queens, mm -hmm. uh, Far Rockaway. Yep. We, we know the demographics. And mm -hmm. we are cited at Brooklyn because Brooklyn has the number one uh, number of African-American businesses in the country. And I, and I know when I come to Brooklyn, I'm going to be able to change Brooklyn. African Americans, so we will be able to be bundled in under that. Yes, we already come. We already uh, we've done some events already in Brooklyn. The borough president, um, Eric Adams, he put us in. We had two hundred people in borough. One event, our first event, we packed borough hall. So we are looking to help it because this is what I do as a chamber. We access resources where we you know certain neighborhoods like East New York, Brownsville, mm -hmm. the Small Business Administration may not come. Well, guess what? With a president like me, it will come to areas that's underserved. And I will advocate on their behalf for services. This is very, very great news to hear because Brooklyn's changed. We yes. know Brooklyn, the face of Brooklyn has changed. Um, there's still the flavor of Brooklyn is still here. But we know because of gentrification, there's been certain changes. And it has bought its good, but it has also made it difficult for local businesses people who've been in the area forever um to thrive the same way that may have been different if we had had a strong chamber of commerce african-american because we would have been lobbying we would have been like i'll give you an example we've been to some restaurants on a monday night and we put 200 people 100 people in a monday night at a restaurant so i think the chamber of commerce with its influence one of the things that we do is we serve as a marketing function hmm. right and that's great because every business, even the president, need marketing because no business is too known. So one of the things that we feel that we got the businesses that's existing, like your business is an existing business. If we take your business and we work with your business, we can help grow your business, right? We got businesses open, right? That means mm -hmm. they, they operate and they can take cash, right? So why don't we identify these businesses and try to strengthen them? And that's that's the model that it really should be. Um, I think that's great to actually do that because the whole point is to keep things going. Like Jay-Z said, buy the block. Yes, that's true. That's you know, true. keep it going. Just keep the resources flowing. And in our next segment, I definitely want to talk about that. What are some of these resources in particular that people can look forward to? Because I think they just need to know about it and really be able to benefit. So hold that thought. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. back you're watching beyond focus tv i'm lydia patel so phil why don't you tell us a little bit about those resources so if we if you were to come into brooklyn what could a business in brownsville or east new york or east flatbush be really looking forward to some of the local caribbean restaurants my family's caribbean those areas have, tend to have very heavy jamaican trinidadian populations um those are little mama pop smaller restaurants that may not be booming on a Monday night, how would you be able to assist them? Well, one of the things that we are um, working on right now is doing a pop-up event, a pop-up chamber event at a local business. Um, 
And uh, we may also identify some businesses to say, you know what, we want to market this business for 12 months. All right, this business is in the directory. You know, we use catering every month. We get 60 to 80 people almost every month without even trying. If we had that business cater and more people taste their food, that uh, I, I guarantee you, if the food is good, they're going to have increase in sales. So one of the things that we're looking at also is the directory. You know, um, you know, years ago you would have a directory. We are that business directory where you need a business. Um, and I'll give you how far it even extends beyond New York. We got some people that grandmother may live in Brooklyn and they need a roof, and they need a, a credible person to do roofing. Guess mm -hmm. who they call? The Chamber of Commerce. So we've got that call about three times from out of state because people trusted us yes. to fix their grandmother's house. And that's very important because to be a part of the chamber, you kind of, not just anybody could be a part of the chamber. And I want you to really share with the viewers just how your selection process is and just how reputable it is. You know, there's membership dues or very stringent things that when you are a part of this, you gain access. So it's like, Yes, you do have to pay to be a part of it, but the benefit is going to be. And if you bad, and if we it. get and we get bad word for, word of mouth on you, guess what? We take you out the roller deck. So, so uh, we can identify. Um, it's small enough for us to say, you know, all right, I got bad service. But we don't want the consumer to stop there. We want to be able to tell the business that you need to improve. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think it's fair to give people a shot, right? Absolutely. You know, some people may not have been mentored in business. They may not have the communication skills. That, so we are, what we do is we bring agencies on, like the EAP Center. Do you know throughout the whole state they have entrepreneurial Trump, assistance uh, centers? Uh, but what happened is most people go into business the bake cake but they never look at the business side on training mm -hmm. so we tell them hey you need training and we bring those resources to the chamber of commerce and it's so funny you said that because they can be a master baker but they don't understand the business aspect or even this happens a lot with artists you know they could sing they could dance but they don't understand their contracts they don't understand interview skills they don't have that other promotional part down but give them the mic and they'll tear it up on stage but that can't be the only thing because you're ultimately doing this to make money. That's true. That's true. And if this is going to be a profit and not a hobby, then you have to do this. Obviously, a lot of these restaurants or businesses, you're not doing this to just do it. You're doing this and you're trying to live and, and sustain your livelihood off of it. And you have to keep innovating in any business. Things change. Competitors, you have to work really hard. Like when I had my businesses, I was always... Uh, wanted to be number one in the marketplace i wanted to be um excellence at, at what i do that was the model excellence in haircutting i wanted to say you know what this is son done so well that not only do we cut hair in the african-american community even with an african-american logo we became so well that we became like a mcdonald's a brand where every portion of the consumer market used my services and speaking of mcdonald's when i had this battle with um smaller businesses who don't think they need to advertise and i'm like mcdonald's is a 70 year old company and still spends millions of dollars advertising every year i got a story on that they um in the early days they put a percentage um to advertising for years and that's how they became number one is because they put because you know all the businesses is about creation of customers and customers move on right if you got to advertise you got to get new customers mm -hmm. the, all type of things happen to customers so and uh, customers even lose their job then you got to get another one mm -hmm. right so um they understood but one of the things that them, they um are, are also um customer satisfaction they send people to school before they touch the customer that's why they got mcdonald's university yeah they knew that it mean it makes a difference that the customer the employee says thank you uh, you know goodbye you're welcome you know uh, would you like this you know so um it's it's one of the um models of also using systems because mm -hmm. people don't work but systems do and i had that problem i'll tell you a little story you know in the winter time if you have a storefront mm -hmm. you know the sign um stays on uh, it doesn't come on at night in the winter time you lose visibility my employees would always never cut the sign on. Guess what? I put a timer in. Not only did it increase visibility at night, but it cut off when it didn't need. So right, so I was saving money and using more productivity and marketing. <laughs> so that's why, and even saying, imagine if you had a business and you had a thank you sign on the way out, and employees didn't say thank you. So systems work. When you, uh, 
And even when I went through my business, I was able to look at a check off. Is the is the is the bathroom clean? Is the is the floor clean? Right. Is, the, is the trash empty? I had a sheet. I go to my business, do my business in a half an hour, and look at everything that'd be aligned. Cause systems work, people don't. I like that though, mm -hmm. and that's a. I think I'm gonna carry that through with me too because it's very true. Systems work, but people don't. But that's why you have systems in place to try to always strive for that. And I think that's something that the chamber has been doing so. Well, how many members are you at right now? 300 members. 300, which is a very uh, substantial. We, and and uh, I think we got room for more. Especially, yeah, room for more. Especially coming to Brooklyn. <laughs> I think it, Brooklyn's going to be that tipping factor that's really going to take you guys to the next level. Because if you've achieved already 300 people just from there, imagine what else you could do. Why don't you let everyone know just what a membership with you guys really entails? Uh, it, it entails uh, monthly meetings. Um, every month we bring in a different speaker. Uh, they automatically get to list their business on the directory. And more importantly than that, um, they have access to the president. Um, I'll give you one story. One of the members, I think she, I, she's been uh, around a, not even a year as a member. And I was able to make, she had published 12 books. And I was making, I may have been able to make one call where she's no longer going to be selling 100, but she may be selling 100,000 books. So also some of it is like, all right, who do I know? What access do I know? Do I know? I happen to know a book buyer that sells to school districts of the whole state, and I was able to call them. But guess what? I pitched three other people the same project, the authors, but they didn't get it. But this one, they was interested in having a contract. So right. one of the things that we do as a chamber is we look out for our businesses. We listen to you. Right, because every business, every business owner that joins the chamber is like a customer to me. Mm -hmm. So I look for their needs and how they I can help them. Some of them. I do publicity for and their businesses start growing and now they have enough collateral where it opens doors. So we do a lot of things. Um, and the business owner, just the fact that you got 80 to 90 people every month that you could trade for that you don't got to run around the 20 events, that's, ma that's major. That is. That's major because now you got the base, you got a trusting environment. Oh, I'm a chamber, could I get a meeting with you? I met you at the chamber, we both meeting, right? So now that's friendly type of business arrangement. I love it. Well, hold that thought. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. back you're watching beyond focus tv i'm lydia patel so phil why don't you tell us about 2020 so much is going on so i know brooklyn you got plans to expand into brooklyn you've already met with borough president eric, eric adams but what is your real long-term goal for brooklyn well one of the things that we think with brooklyn is um i think brooklyn will bring us over the top i think the fact that we have so many businesses in brooklyn and um a lot of businesses uh, could not maintain the increase of rents that's coming on right now. But Especially in bed -Stuy and but maybe, Heights. But maybe if we had a thriving chamber that you know could pack their place and make them a mainstream business, it would be different. So one of the things that we're looking at is sheer numbers, um, and we're going to bring more services to them. You know, Because mm -hmm. one of the things is, it's one thing to be a part of a chamber, and a lot of times, a lot of chambers of commerce, if you're not a big box a multi-million dollar corporation they don't really listen to the small business owner no. so that is our niche is that we listen to our business owner because we know that hey it's possibilities that things can happen you know um even today i sent a young girl to a eap training a 10-week mm -hmm. course for hostel mm -hmm. university where they work with small business i said look you need to publish your book and talk to your peers now you're 20 something why don't you write a book about how you achieved all what you achieved already don't don't just undermine your own position because and we need you training and she had a business already but i did say you know what you didn't get no business training i said well you need to go over here and get some business training how to put cash on the statement how to put money coming in and out so but nobody never told her but she got a she got a cleaning business so when we we change people like that especially when they're young uh, we even take millennials in because one of the things that we're doing we got a 50 a 30 uh 50 dollar 
membership for those 30 and under because young people often say, you know what, you got $150. I can't afford to pay that membership. Mm -hmm. So we don't want them to stand on the outside of us mentoring businesses and taking our community to the next level with them on the outside. So that's why I think the chamber um, is really going to be a strong entity. We, we work, to, even today, we went with a major company around MWBE. It's a hot issue in the state. And this is our time for really opportunity. And if we don't get the community together, it, it, we, we're not going to be able to exist and survive nowhere. We need to build businesses. We need to build more income so we can stay in New York. I love New York, right? Many, many of us, we've been here all of our life. Yep. We love it. And if we're making money and enough money, it's fine to live here, right? And how are we going to do that is business development. I love that. And we need more of that. And I think it's going to be super important to continue and do that. Um, why don't you share some of the challenges? of having the chamber and some of the little things that people might not be aware of that you know is happening but you're still able to overcome well one of the things i think is that um we don't show up enough you know we think it doesn't matter coming in the room or being somewhere present um and for many years i've been doing business seminar on my own networks and i know how important it is because one at one event that I did, my other business I'd had for years was a power networking uh, business seminar series. Somebody came and they said, you know what, to date, my business, 15 years later, the, that networking event was the biggest client I ever had. So we got to show up and then we got to be teachable. We got to be teachable. We got to be in the room learning things because if we don't learn things, it just may be a conversation that creates an opportunity. Like this mm -hmm. right here, this could be an opportunity for you. Absolutely. And that, that's why we got to show up and we also got to show out. We got to when we show come, up, show out, be present. <laughs> and we got to be the best when we when we when we um go into business. We can't just take ordinary. We got we got to be so extraordinary. They say, what did they get those people in this company? And that's what and that course training training. We we have to train and develop. We have to read. Uh, and all these years, people seeing what I'm doing now. But guess what? At 21 years old, I was reading reading books. American Management Company, how to real, uh, build wor world class companies. So we got it right. We got to know that you can build a wor world class company. There's companies that go from zero dollars to 20 million in a couple of years. But there's a way that we got to do it. Invest. We got to invest in ourselves because business cannot become more than what we are. I think something I'm I'm just admiring what you're saying because it's so true um and i think you have to have that spark within you everyone's capable of doing it but you definitely have a special spark that you identified that from a young age and you just ran with it and now look at you you're able to bring others under you um what words do you have for those coming up the, the millennials um, or even that older person who didn't take the conventional path the road has been a little bit rocky but they're still trying. Well, one of the things I say is find a mentor. You know, um, I got people that's like 45 and 50. They consider me their mentor. You know, they still come around for advice and they looked at my life and even in the difficulties and sometimes I had obstacles as a leader and how I navigated it. I was patient. I never became something else. I kept my humility. And one of the things I say is focus on your mission. Whatever mm -hmm. your life mission and purpose is, you know, there's going to be obstacles. Things come by. But like Denzel said on that flight, that movie with the flight, there's going to be an opening. If you keep focusing on the mission in the long term, you're going to make it. You can't let um, short terms things um, get in your way. And I like to say this too. Someone said, don't don't get too up on the ups and too down on the downs. Life is about playing, hanging in there and playing the game no matter what level you're on, giving your best. I love it. That's, that's so true. How do we get in contact with you in terms of the website, social media? Uh, let everyone know. Well, if you put um, New York State largest African-American chamber of commerce, it comes <laughs> up. Um, it, we own that space. Um, if you put Lo Long Island African-American chamber of commerce, www.liaacc.com, we come up. So the Long Island African-American chamber of commerce. If you put African-American chamber of commerce in New York, we come up. So. We also market. One of the things that we did is we we studied Google. You know, you got to mm -hmm. know Google's are smart. They smarter than me. If you ask them who Phil Andrews is, Phil Andrews will come up and tell who Phil Andrews in New York and will tell you who I am. So I think we need to really. That's another lesson we need to teach our community how to put their businesses on Google, how to get them on the map, because there's a tremendous um, opportunity. People are first shopping online before they go to the store. Absolutely. 
before you spend your money, you want to do a little, even, even if I know I'm about to make the purchase, it all starts, it, that's why if you don't have a website, if you don't have any social presence, nine out of 10 times, I'm not going to make that purchase. That's how I found you. <laughs> online and I was I was happy and I was I was impressed too I did my research I saw the traffic and I was like this is a viable operation and if I could find any way to support it I'm going to support it. Thank you very it. much and and that means a lot. But um, you put a lot of work in it to get we, it to where it got. We have put a lot of work in and myself and the team it's been a lot over the years um, even when we didn't have those links and it was just strictly Brooklyn based and now we, we're, we're all over and YouTube has made it uh, an amazing platform as well. Um, but I think it's great that you really assist with that. So Facebook pages or anything? Oh yes, we have Facebook, we have LinkedIn, we have Instagram. Uh, I think that's um, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Okay, so and you're, we have, we you're socially social connected. Handles, social handles. Awesome. Well, Phil Andrews, thank you so much. I want to have you back because I know you're involved in not just your business here, but you have a couple of other things. So yes. I look forward to having you back again. Thank you. And then doing another segment with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back again next week. Same time, same place you're watching. Beyond Focus TV, stay with us. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you.